Can we just pretend, right, that that game against Middlesbrough didn't exist? Didn't happen. It's gone. What game? What penalty shootout? I didn't see no penalty shootout. Let's focus on Burnley. Let's focus on Southampton. Let's focus on what's coming up for United because the FA Cup was a massive disappointment. But the measure of success at United will never be the FA Cup and whether we win it or not. It would have helped in terms of the narrative for Ralph Ragnick this season. But look, let's talk about Burnley. Going to run through the latest team news from Ragnick and he, that he gave in his pre-match press conference ahead of Burnley. And now I'm going to head to the tactics board and run through what I think is going to be the starting eleven to face Burnley. Before I do begin, if you would consider, please, ladies and gents, hitting that subscribe button down there. Support United People's TV however you can. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell as well so you get a ping every time I go live with a video because you wouldn't want to miss it. But let's jump straight into this one. And the latest team news is it will definitely be two players who aren't playing against Burnley. And that is Alex Tellez and Fred. Both are going to be missing the game with COVID. Now, that definitely throws up a real question that we need to speak about. And that's in midfield. Because we all know that Manchester United's midfield is weak anyway. Fred, of course, missed uh, the game against Middlesbrough. And we had a really fluid game playing Paul Pogba there alongside Bruno Fernandes. But will Paul Pogba be fit enough to play this game? I'm not too sure. In terms of Ralph speaking about that Borough game, which I've now been a hypocrite about because I'm speaking about having tried to pretend it didn't exist. Anyway, uh, he was saying that there's two points of uh, criticism that we need to face here. One was the finishing there against Middlesbrough, and we all know it was terrible. And the second thing that he really wanted to speak about was this one. The 10 seconds before we conceded the goal, he was speaking about the Manchester United being in the pressing situation, not taking advantage, not getting the ball. All of a sudden, United are overloaded in our own box eight seconds later. Ralph really is a man who is very particular, very accurate, and as a, I've said this before, his honesty. I really enjoy and find his honesty refreshing because it doesn't really come from a place of malice. He's just being completely truthful. And they are the two problems that they, I suppose we had there against Middlesbrough. But finishing was the first one. And we know how bad our finishing was. In terms of defending, I thought largely we were... Well, we didn't have to do much really, did we? Of course, we conceded the goal. But heading over to the tactics board here, I personally think you're going to see that... Well, you won't see the same backfire because I think Dave will come back in. But I don't really see any reason why he would put Lindelof in because he was ill all last week. Bailly's got a bit of an injury to his ankle. So I think Varane and Maguire may actually be our only two fit centre-backs. But one thing that Burnley are definitely going to do, what's his name? Veghorst. Burnley have just signed the Green Giant. He's like 1.97 metres. He's absolutely massive. And you know exactly what they're going to be doing. They're going to lump balls in and try and win the headers, try and win the knockdowns. That's going to be a big part of Burnley's game. So Maguire, whether you like him or lump him, Probably the best defender to have in the team to try and stop that from being a threat. So I think Maguire hopefully will have a good game and be important. Uh, Varane is fit to play. So I think it'll be those two. Varane I've really enjoyed watching uh, over the last few games. I think he's really starting to find his feet at United. And he's uh, by some distance the best defender we've got, really. Um, Delo, I think he'll start there. And sure, I... Delo will basically start every single game now for the rest of the season, I think. I can't really see how wan gets back in unless Delo gets injured. Uh, that, I think that's pretty much the only way that he's going to get back into this team. Shaw and Tellez, you can have a little um, argument about, but Tellez right now, missing with COVID. So Shaw's going to keep his place in that team. But as has been the case all season long, ladies and gents, isn't it? The real questions are in midfield. Hmm, not the first time I've said that. Hmm, won't be the last time I say that until we actually, you know, sign a midfielder. But here we go. I'll head to the midfield now. But before I do, a quick shout out to One Football. You know what time it is. It's time for me to big up One Football, who are supporting United People's TV and have been one of the biggest supporters of United People's TV over the years. This is me saying, please go and download the app. There is a link in the description. It's free. It literally is a one-stop shop app. Go on there for all the latest Manchester United news, transfer news, all the build-up to the game, as well as this video, of course. Uh, but yeah, make sure you head over there, follow the link in the description, do me a favour, help United People's TV out by helping out one football. Everybody wins. But let's get back and let's talk about the midfield. Right, so let's talk about this midfield. Now, I've got Fred here as starting in that midfield and I absolutely shouldn't have Fred there. I don't know why Fred is there. He's not supposed to be there. But it kind of, it highlights the problem we've got inside this team, right? So if Fred's not going to play there, we know what happened against uh, Middlesbrough. It was Bruno on the right hand. Actually, I think it might have been Pogba on the right hand side, which kind of surprised me a little bit. That's the midfield three that we that we played against Middlesbrough, right? And I tell you what, that midfield three 
really worked. Against Middlesbrough, I know it's Middlesbrough, right? Big caveat, of course, it's Middlesbrough. It's a championship team, but it's a championship team in decent form, right? It's not like a cannon fodder inside that league. That midfield three, it just worked because you saw uh, you had Jaden Sancho on the right-hand side, Marcus Rash on the left-hand side. The link-up play between those four against Middlesbrough was some of the best link-up play I've seen Manchester United play this season. Real nice one-touch football, incisive passing, quick tempo to it all, smart movements, good decision-making, terrible finishing. That's what it was against Middlesbrough, right? And Pogba, if he's fit enough, I'd definitely put him inside that starting eleven with McTominay there at the base. If Pogba's not fit enough, fit enough, sorry, you're probably going to see this because I'm not really sure what other option Ralph would have apart from to play McTominay there as the box-to-box -box midfielder and Matic there as the holding midfielder. Because look, right, if we head over to our midfield options here, Pogba he can play there. No, I don't think I don't think Matic should be considered there. If I'm honest, Lingard's not that player. He's out on loan. He's out on loan. He's got COVID. He's already starting. He's out on loan. He could start. That's what we're having a conversation about. He's out on loan. He's out on loan. He could start. And of course, you could see Hannibal there. I don't think... Uh, it doesn't strike me that Burnley away midweek is going to be the best place to give Hannibal the, the full debut in the Premier League. That's just my own opinion. But it all depends on whether Pogba is fit. Now, for the all intents and purposes of this video, I'm going to say that Pogba is going to be fit to start because we haven't heard any confirmation... To the contrary, if you know what I mean. Uh, Ralph hasn't said that he's not going to be available. So if, he's, if he is available, I'm going to put that as the midfield three and keep it from the game that we had there against Middlesbrough. Because I know the finishing was bad, right? But the creativity of that team against Middlesbrough was by some margin our best this season. And I, as I said, if we're looking at incremental steps and, and improvements from the second half against Brentford to the full game against West Ham to that first 45, 60 minutes against Middlesbrough. Better, better, better improvement, improvement, improvement. And if our finishing was on point against Middlesbrough, not even just on point, even if it was slightly good, we would have scored at least one of those clear-cut chances that we just missed and spooned every single one of them. And of course, Bruno Fernandes, that, what, that chance there was absolutely horrendous. But that was what I would play in midfield. If they are fit, I would stick with the same midfield that played against Middlesbrough. Just depends on whether Pop is fit or not. And look, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to put that as Pop now instead of Fred. And this is what I would do as a front three. Again, I haven't made any changes here. Now, you could have an argument here about Ilanga and Rashford. Yeah, you definitely could. Ilanga, he deserves... Nothing but praise and credit and support United fans after missing that penalty. And he, that's something going to be playing on his mind. It won't be something that plays on United's, the mind of United fans too much. Um, but you can't help, I suppose, but be a player. And if you miss the penalty that knocks a team out, you can't help but take that sort of frustration and pain on. As I said, I think that front four there, Rashford, Sancho, Pogba and Bruno offered Manchester United the best creative football that we've seen under Ralph Ragnick. Uh, you saw Rashford sort of dropping into spaces there. Sancho was dropping into spaces when they needed to. They were going wide when they needed to. Pogba and Bruno were breaking through the lines. It was, it was enjoyable to watch. Ronaldo was dropping deeper when he wanted to. I see no reason why Ralph would change that. I see no reason. If, if, they're not all, if they're all fit and they're all ready, I see no reason why he would change that starting 11 there. So is that the, no. Lindorf, no, Lindorf. Well, I don't know why Lindorf's there. That should be Maguire. I really should have looked at these names before I did this. I thought I did. But then Fred and the Fred and other news came out and it got a bit, I got a bit confusing. Got a bit confusing. I don't know what my accent was there. But look, I think that's going to be the team. Now, of course, there's an either there's a different conversation to be had about Cristiano Ronaldo, who had, I would probably argue, a one out of ten performance against um Middlesbrough, wasn't it? It was abysmal. His finishing was so woeful. But Cristiano Ronaldo is our top goal scorer. Cristiano Ronaldo will start this game. Cavani's going to be fit, he's going to be in the squad. Lingard's going to be fit. He's going to be in the squad. We've got different options from the bench here against Burnley. But Burnley are going to be mega, mega physical. Burnley are going to be uber Burnley, I think, on Tuesday night. They're bottom. They need points. A nil-nil draw on home. I think they were home against Watford. Don't expect anything other than, like, cliche Burnley. Uh, and that's why I think probably Harry Maguire is going to be quite important if he can play properly. Uh, get up against Veghorst, their new signing. Six foot six, I think he is. My God, an absolute monster. And it all depends really on whether Pogba is fit to start again. Bruno will be fit. McTominay will be fit. 
If Pogba's fit to start and maybe play 60 minutes and then maybe bring Matic on and then switch McTominay and put McTominay as the box-to-box -box midfielder, maybe we'll see that. Maybe we'll see Hannibal. I don't think we'll see Hannibal in this game. But I wouldn't change that front six. Ronaldo had a really bad off night. But this is Cristiano Ronaldo we're talking about, man. I, he'll be fine and he'll be scoring goals again. The reason he's struggling inside this system is because he's used to playing inside a team that dominates the ball, dominates possession. And therefore, all he's got to do is just goal hang. Score goals. Goals galore. But in this United team now, he's dropping deep. He's dropping there. He's dropping everywhere. He's trying to get involved. And he's not being as... I don't know. His return isn't, I suppose, there. Well, it wasn't there against Middlesbrough. But that front five there created so many opportunities. I don't see why Ralph would change it. You might disagree with that, but that's what I think. I think it'll be that front five. And what, as I said, that midfield all depends on whether Pogba is fit to start again. And maybe because that was his first game in, what, three months? Maybe he won't be. But you can let me know what you think about that team in the comments below. What's your feelings about the game? What? Do you think that game against Borough is going to really negatively affect the mindset? I don't think it will. As I said, I think there were, if we're, if we're taking that purely from a footballing perspective, that game, the first 60 minutes was the best we have seen under Ralph Ragnick. Unfortunately, because of everything that happened in the rest of that game, that all got buried and forgotten about. But if I'm focusing on the positives, I want to see that again. That first 60 against Borough, I want to see that repeated against Burnley and the finishing to be there. Because if we did the same thing again against Burnley that we did against Middlesbrough we're going to be 2-3-0 up before half time simple as that and that's why I don't think that Ralph will change that starting 11 too much unless he has to what's your reaction you let me know in the comments below as you always do and please consider subscribing to United People's TV if you're new until tomorrow morning yep take it easy everyone